Hello, my fellow engineers. As we delve into the remarkable stories of World War II, we find ourselves drawn to one in particular aircraft, whose name echoes through the halls of time with a resonance that transcends mere machinery. It's a name synonymous with courage, with resilience, and with the unyielding spirit of those who took to the skies in defense of freedom. At the dawn of the Second World War, as the dark clouds of conflict gathered over Europe, one aircraft emerged as a symbol of hope amidst the chaos. Its sleek silhouette cutting through the tumultuous skies, it stood as a stalwart guardian of liberty, a beacon of defiance against tyranny. That aircraft, my friends, is none other than the Supermarine Spitfire. Renowned for its agility, its speed, and its formidable firepower, the Spitfire became the backbone of Britain's aerial defense during the darkest days of the war. From the heat of the Battle of Britain to the desolate expanses of the North African desert, the Spitfire proved its mettle time and time again, earning the admiration of allies and adversaries alike. But as we learn more and more about the aerial warfare, we see that there is another plane that played a crucial role in achieving air superiority. For a while the Spitfire may have defended Britain's skies with unmatched ferocity, it was another aircraft that would leave an indelible mark on the annals of aerial warfare. Its name evokes images of sleek lines and thundering engines, of daring dogfights and heroic deeds. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak, of course, of the P-51 Mustang. From its humble beginnings as a pursuit aircraft to its transformation into a legendary long-range fighter escort, the P-51 Mustang carved a path of glory through the skies of World War II, earning its place in the pantheon of aviation greatness. But I am sure you all heard this name that is recognized worldwide to this day and is very known among aviation enthusiasts. It is a plane that changed the concept of bombing missions forever for every military in the world. The story starts in 1938, when the British Commission headed by Sir Henry Self requested new aircraft from the North American, but the company didn't have any planes that met the requirements of the Royal Air Force with only the Curtis P-40 Tomahawk coming close to those requirements. Sir Henry Self was persuaded into buying some other aircraft such as the medium bomber the B-25 Mitchell. Instead Self asked if they could manufacture P-40s under Curtis license. The Curtis Wright plant was running at capacity, and so the P-40s was in short supply, so NAA President Dutch Kindleberger proposed that they could have a better aircraft ready sooner with the same Allison engine than establishing a new production line for the P-40s. You know, why not build a better plane and also do it faster, right? Enter John Atwood, a key figure at NAA, who worked tirelessly with the British Commission to bring the P-51 project to life. Together, they hashed out the intricate details of the program, from armaments to specifications such as for machine guns per aircraft, ensuring that the aircraft would meet the Royal Air Force strict standards but not everyone was convinced. The British Purchasing Commission harbored doubts, wary of entrusting such a critical task to a company with no prior experience in fighter aircraft production. Little did they know, North American was about to defy all expectations. Despite the skepticism, a historic decision was made, with an requirement of not surpassing the price of $40,000 per aircraft. An initial order of 320 aircrafts was placed, marking the beginning of the P-51 Mustang's journey into aviation legend. And so, against all odds, the P-51 Mustang was born, destined to become one of the most revered and celebrated fighter aircraft in history. But this was just the beginning of an extraordinary saga that would unfold in the skies over war-torn Europe. The aircraft was designed by a team led by lead engineer Edgar Schmude followed the best conventional practice of the era, designed for ease of mass manufacturing. Even though it was built with mass manufacturing in mind, it included many new and innovative features. The wings were designed with the use laminar flow airfoils, it kept the aircraft very light but also reduced drag at high speed, and lowered fuel consumption. The other feature was a new cooling arrangement positioned aft, single ducted water and oil radiators assembly that reduced the fuselage drag and effects on the wing. Even simple things as canopy was thought about, the Mustang features a bubble-shaped canopy, which increases visibility. 
With this canopy design, the pilots have more situational awareness and it was easier for them to spot enemy aircrafts and targets, and to engage in combat. Later on, the engineers discovered that the cooling assembly could take advantage of the Meredith effect. It is a very simple, but at the same time very clever design feature when cold air enters the air ducts. It interacts with the radiator containing hot working fluid. When the air is heated, it increases in volume a little bit. The hot, pressurized air then exits through the exhaust duct, which is shaped to be convergent and narrow towards the rear. This accelerates the air backwards and gives the plane a small thrust. It seems so simple and so genius at the same time. The engineers worked very hard to reduce drag of the aircraft. It was the first aircraft to have fuselage lofted mathematically, using conic section which resulted in smooth low drag surfaces and also the semi-monocoque fuselage was entirely of aluminium to save weight. The plane was designed with precision and to achieve excellence. But even the most brilliant designs sometimes encounter obstacles along the path to greatness, and for the Mustang it was the engine. The Mustang was fitted with the Allison engine, that had a single-stage supercharger producing 1,150 horsepower at 20,000 feet, but the engineers noted a rapid power drop at 15,000 feet, which made the plane unsuitable for high altitudes, where most of the combat was taking place in Europe. After the initial positive result, formed the Royal Air Force about operating the plane below 15,000 feet, Ronald Harker had a bold suggestion of fitting the Merlin engine to the Mustang. The Merlin 61 offered more than just raw power, it had a two-speed, two-stage, intercooled supercharger, designed by Stanley Hooker of Rolls-Royce. It developed 1,390 horsepower at 23,500 feet, and also increasing the maximum speed of the aircraft to an estimated 440 miles per hour. The engine also featured pressurized fuel injection system, which allowed the pilots to perform high-G maneuvers without fuel starvation. This innovation improved the aircraft's combat effectiveness and survivability in aerial combat. With the roar of the Merlin engine echoing through the skies, the P-51 Mustang underwent a metamorphosis. Its wings, once burdened by limitations, now soared with newfound vigor and purpose. With enhanced speed, agility, and endurance, the Mustang emerged as a formidable force to be reckoned with, reshaping the landscape of aerial warfare in Europe. It completely transformed the P-51 Mustang, providing the Allies with an aircraft capable of achieving air superiority in Europe. The plane was fitted with six 50 caliber Browning machine guns, 10 T-64 FAR rockets, and also 250 or 500 pounds bomb on hardpoint under each wing. Because it was during wartime, the plane was supplied to the Royal Air Force underland lease. The first supply were 94 marks, designated by United States Army as P-51. The initial arrival was on October 1941 and the plane entered service in January 1942. As the initial variants had low performance at high altitude but good fuel efficiency, the plane was initially used as a tactical reconnaissance and ground attack fighter. In May 1942, Mustangs first flew over France, after that, Mustangs started to make long-distance reconnaissance flights over Germany. One mission for which it was extensively used for was to seek out V-1 flying bomb sites, but also very useful at intercepting the V-1 flying bomb when used to conduct attacks against London. But one of the most interesting feature of the plane was how it changed the pre-war doctrine of United States. The pre-war doctrine was based on the idea that the bomber will always get through. At the start of the war, the loss rate of bombers was of 2%, but in 1943, on 14th of October, the United States conducted an air raid which caused the loss of 77 out of 291 bombers, a 26% of attacking force. After that very mission, the doctrine of self-defending bombers was put in question. The P-51 Mustang was a solution to the need for an effective bomber escort. It used a common, reliable engine and had internal space for a larger-than-average fuel load. With external fuel tanks, it could accompany the bombers from England to Germany and back, with an endurance of 4 hours and 45 minutes with standard internal fuel of 184 gallons, and 150 gallons carried externally. 
the Mustang was so effective in escorting bombers that by the end of 1944, 14 out of 15 groups flew Mustangs. It was a combination of multiple qualities such as an advanced platform equipped with a very good engine, it provided good fuel economy for long-range flights, but also extreme agility, for attacking other aircraft or defending the bombers. The Mustang really stepped up and delivered everything it could to help the Allies to achieve air superiority. The Mustang wasn't used only in Europe during World War II. First, it joined the China Nationalist Air Force to conduct attacks against Japanese targets in occupied areas, and it became the most capable fighter in China. The Mustang was relatively late to the Pacific theater due to the need of the aircraft in Europe, but as war wound down, it became more common. The Mustang played an important role in the capturing of the Iwo Jima, which was a major battle between United States and Imperial Japan. After that, the Mustang was used to escort B-29 bombers during its missions on homeland Japan. It proved very capable in escorting the bombers, and also was very effective against the Japanese Zero fighter aircrafts. The plane was very loved by the Allied pilots, but it was also respected by its adversaries. As the German fighter ace, Heinz Barr said that the P-51 was perhaps the most difficult of all Allied aircraft to meet in combat. The P-51 Mustang served in the air forces of several countries around the world, both during and after World War II. While the United States was the primary operator of the P-51, many other nations also utilized this iconic fighter aircraft. Countries like Germany, Italy, United Kingdom, Australia, and France, just to name a few. The Mustang remained operational long after the war. Countries like United States used the plane for reconnaissance missions, as a training aircraft for new pilots and also as an interim fighter until more advanced jets arrived. The last known operator of the Mustang was the Dominican Republic. It was in service until 1980 and was used for close air support missions and aerial reconnaissance. The Mustang was replaced with more advanced and powerful fighter jets, but it showed that the Mustang was a truly advanced aircraft which helped the Allies during the war and also was still in service after the war for many nations. History reminded us of the enduring legacy of the P-51 Mustang. From its humble beginnings as a pursuit aircraft to its transformation into a legendary long-range fighter escort, the Mustang carved a path of glory through the skies of World War II earning its place in the pantheon of aviation greatness. Just like the Spitfire, the Mustang wasn't just a machine, it was a symbol of hope and freedom. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe for more interesting and amazing machines that was engineered to the maximum. Until next time, fly high and stay curious.